channel and this series looking at the science behind solar panels, batteries and green energy. So on the screen now you'll see a picture of my Solis inverter and what this device does is convert the DC uh, electricity from my solar panels or battery system and convert it into an AC electricity for use in my house. But the question is, how does one of these inverters actually work? And in this video, I'm going to explain the basic principles behind inverter technology. We have to start with what DC and AC electricity is. DC electricity is direct current. So when the uh, solar panels produce electricity, they produce a flow of electrons which move through the device that they're trying to power, um, which is, we'll call the load, and those electrons will continue to flow around the circuit and come back to their original source or to ground. And this is how a battery works as well. They push the elect physically push the electrons around the circuit. Unfortunately, in the UK and in most other countries, houses are powered from the natural grid, which produces alternating current or AC electricity. And this is because of the way that the electricity is, uh, is produced by generators, where you have a, magne a magnet rotating around a coil of uh, wire. And as that magnet rotates, sometimes by, at a point in the wire, you'll have the north pole, so you'll have a no um, one type of magnetic field, and as it rotates, you get the, other, the opposite of that magnetic field. And therefore, you get this what's called an alternating current, because the electrons are being pushed in one direction and then pushed back the other way, so they're oscillating back and forth. What this effectively means from terms of voltage is that, as you can see from this graph, that a DC current will generate a stable vol voltage, while an AC current will generate an alternating voltage, and therefore it has a frequency associated with it. In the UK, this switch from positive voltage to negative voltage happens 50 times a second, so it goes from uh, pos positive voltage to negative voltage back up to positive 50 times, and this is why we have frequency of 50 hertz in the UK. There's a simple way of being able to convert a DC to AC current, and this is what this circuit does. As you can see, there's actually two circuits drawn on here, the black one and the red one. And both circuits have uh, two switches in them, and both are connected up to the load. But as you can see, in the case of the black circuit, the, um, it's connected up to the positive, I'm using a battery as the, um, as the idea of the actual power generation from this, so the DC power. And as you can see, the e positive is connected to one side of the load in the black circuit, and on the red circuit is connected up to the other side of the load. And to make an alternating current, all you need to do is alternate opening and closing the black switches with doing the opposite of the red switches. And this is what this little animation will do here. As you can see, when the red uh, switches close and the black switches are open, the current flows down through the load, as you look at it, and when the red switches are open and the black switches are closed, the current will flow up through the load. So if you alternate which switches are closed and which switches are open, you're effectively reversing the polarity. I always wanted to say that in a video, going back to Doctor Who and any sort of sci-fi. Um, and this will cause the current, therefore, to flow in different directions through the load, which is effectively what alternating currents do. So this is the basic principle of a inverter and older style inverters, this is how they work and there is a problem with them because if you look at the type of wave that the this uh, simple switching system will work is it won't produce a nice smooth sinusoidal wave which you expect from an AC current, instead you get something called a square wave. And as I say, old style inverters actually used to use this, and this is why you get that characteristic hum for your lights if the inverter is producing a square wave. So the 
there have been improvements to how inverters work and they work about smoothing out this alternating current into a sinusoidal wave. And the way that they do that is by something called pulse modulation. And effectively, when the black switches in that diagram close, what they do is actually open them very quickly and, and close them very quickly, and I mean incredibly quickly. And what this does is that the voltage is on for a very short period of time, and then off for a short period of time and then they close it for a little bit longer and open it for a little bit uh, less time and what this does over time it averages the voltage out as the voltage actually increases and as you see from this graph it actually produces like this step like function again it's not particularly smooth but the uh, more finely you can tune how those switches are opening and closing um, in the, that time period the smoother this will become there are also other ways of actually smoothing out this curve by including capacitors and inductors in the circuit on the way to the load. And this will, again, um, these devices will effectively smooth the current and the frequency by ch effectively charging in the case of the capacitors and then releasing. And that causes a, smoo uh, a smoothening of the curve even further. So that's the basic principles of the inverter. There are some uh, changes that we have to make to this simple diagram to make them into what a true inverter would look like. The switches in this are just looking like mechanical switches. Um, mechanical switches aren't fast enough to be able to switch quick enough to produce AC electricity at the frequency we need in the UK. So instead, those switches are replaced by something called transistors, which are a semiconductor switch, and those allow um, switch in thousands of times a second so they're ideal for this purpose in order to regulate when the switches are coming on and off and how quickly the pulse is being used um, there's also something added into the diagram called a comparator which compares the shape of the curve that's being produced with a triangular wave and looks how they are relative to each other and again this allows um, the curve to be smoothed and also the operation to be done automatically. Um, inverter might also contain a transformer which can step the voltage up so there might be a separate circuit within to do that and also in the case of um, many inverters they'll also have a fan system built in just to allow cooling of the actual inverter because when you're dealing with high powered uh, electricity there's generally a lot of heat involved. We should also point out, or I should also point out that there is a loss when you convert one form of electricity into another. So when you go from DC to AC, there will be some losses. That's because you're having to do this switching system. Um, and more modern inverters are getting more and more efficient at producing that. One thing we haven't covered and I'll cover in a future video is the difference between a normal inverter and a hybrid inverter. With many people now having battery systems to go with their solar panels, um, they are having to install hybrid inverters because DC battery or batteries use DC electricity, therefore charge from DC, and in a hybrid inverter it allows you to charge the battery without having to convert the electricity to AC first, then back into DC. Anyway, I hope you found this video informative. Um, please subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date with any other videos that I uh, release.